Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Starship's fifth flight test may launch October 13th. Boom makes fifth test flight. MBAA activates Hero Database in response to Helene. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Starship's fifth flight test may launch October 13th. SpaceX's Starship may launch on its Flight 5 test flight as early as October 13th, pending regulatory approval. If it does proceed as planned, the launch window will open as early as 0700 Central. In view of the FAA's continued scrutiny or interference, the schedule may change. By all accounts, Starship's Flight 4 was a significant success. Both Starship and Super Heavy flew nominal trajectories and hit their landing targets in the Indian Ocean and Gulf of Mexico, respectively. The primary objectives of Flight 5 will continue progress towards full and rapid reusability. The Super Heavy booster will make its first attempt return to launch site and catch by the tower, while Starship will aim for a soft splashdown in the Indian Ocean again. The SpaceX team has performed extensive upgrades of both the hardware and software in Super Heavy, Starship, and the Launch Catch Tower. Many thousands of hours have been put in by engineers and technicians building, preparing, and testing all of the thousands of separate criteria required to maximize the probability of success. A key upgrade of Starship was a total rework of its heat shield. Technicians spent more than 12,000 hours installing new generation thermal tiles to replace the entire thermal protection system. They also added a backup ablative layer and additional protections to the flaps. After the break, Flighttoberfest postponed due to storms. Looking for a new generation of proven and efficient aviation power plants that boast modern engineering, electronic ignition, and both direct and gear drive systems? With 100 horsepower to 240 horsepower, the Skyline and Redline engines offer uncommon value in an overpriced industry. Whether you are looking for fixed wing or rotor, MW Fly Americas has been established to service the American market with dedication and expertise. MWFlyAmericas.com Over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Flight Toberfest postponed due to storms. With Hurricane Milton coming in strong, the Aerospace Center for Excellence and Sun and Fun made the decision to postpone their Flight Toberfest event. This was originally planned for October 12th and has now been pushed to November 16th. The announcement was made in an emailed statement from the event's hosts. Quote, our primary concern is the safety of our staff and guests. All tickets for Flighttoberfest already purchased will be honored on the new date. We hope you and your family stay safe during the storm. End quote. Navy honors former President Carter's birthday. On October 1st, the U.S. Navy conducted a flyover with four F-A-18EF Super Hornets in commemoration of former President Jimmy Carter's 100th birthday. This event paid tribute to Carter's extensive legacy as both a naval officer and public servant. Carrier Air Wing 3 provided aircraft from its Fighting Swordsmen of Strike Fighter Squadron 32 and its Wildcats of Strike Fighter Squadron 131. These two squadrons are based at Virginia's Naval Air Station Oceana. Skyline awards CAE contract for future Canadian aircrew training. CAE announced it signed a 25-year subcontract valued at $1.7 billion with Skyline, a joint venture between CAE and KF Aerospace, to provide modern, state-of-the-art training for the Royal Canadian Air Force. 
CAE, as the major subcontractor to the future aircrew training program, will deliver comprehensive aircrew training including ground school training, live flying, and simulation. Through this, CAE's longstanding presence at 15 Wing Moose Jaw will be extended. CAE currently operates the NATO Flying Training in Canada program. Spirit Airlines enters wardrobe war with passengers. A Spirit Airlines flight attendant allegedly removed two women from a flight before takeoff because they were wearing crop tops. The carrier stood by the crew member's decision, referencing its contract of carriage. Passengers Tara Kahiti and Teresa Araujo of Southern California originally boarded the flight wearing sweaters. However, due to the aircraft's lack of air conditioning on the ground and the extreme temperatures, they decided to remove them. The women were wearing crop tops underneath, and they were removed from the aircraft. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Boom makes fifth test flight. October 7th marked the fifth successful test flight for Boom Supersonics XB-1 demo aircraft. It flew to an altitude of 17,800 feet MSL in the R-2515 airspace and represents the halfway point in the 10 subsonic flights planned before breaking Mach 1. The flight marked the highest, fastest, and longest flight yet as the aircraft progresses through the test program on its way to supersonic flight near the end of the year. For this flight, the flutter excitation system was repaired and reinstalled to continue collecting data at the Mach 0.6 flutter point. The FES is crucial during this phase of flight and will be used to clear the flight envelope up to transonic speeds. Flying and handling qualities were tested at progressively higher speeds. This included pacer checks and flutter tests as XB-1 reached a new top speed of Mach 0.69. On this flight, as will become SOP during future test flights, the landing gear was retracted immediately after takeoff. The XB-1 flew for about 50 minutes on this flight, with Chief Test Pilot Tristan Geppetto Brandenburg at the controls. XB-1 is Boom's one-third scale demonstrator aircraft that's being used to prove the design and pave the way for Overture, the company's full-scale aircraft intended for a supersonic commercial passenger service. After these messages, MBAA activates Hero Database in response to Helene. Flying is my entire life. It's all that I've ever known. I've relied on Hartzell propellers since about 1995. Hartzell means much more than a propeller. It's a relationship. When you hear the phrase, built on honor, they care about us as pilots, they care about our community, and they care about the product they build. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. The legendary BD four seat program is building an exciting future for those who want a rugged four seat family flyer with a proven history. The Surewings program produces a complete kit and builder assist program that gives you everything you need to be flying a BD four CS in record time. For conventional kit builders, BD Aviation has parts, partial kits, and full kits for the 190 mile per hour BD four C that has logged thousands of hours. Visit Surewings.com and BDAviation.com for more details. Hello, pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. MBAA activates Hero Database in response to Helene. MBAA has activated its Humanitarian Emergency Response Operator Database to aid in mobilizing the business and GA communities for relief operations in the southern U.S. following the crippling impact of Hurricane Helene and will no doubt be aiding victims of Milton as well. The database permits people and businesses to enter information about the availability of their aircraft, personnel, equipment, and other assets that may be deployed in aid missions. 
The information from the database is provided to government agencies as well as non-governmental organizations when they request it. The people in the database represent those in the aviation community who are able to immediately join in the disaster response and relief efforts. It has been activated previously for the same purpose in the aftermath of hurricanes, earthquakes, floods, and other natural disasters. Business aircraft, particularly helicopters, can get in and out of locations where airliners or ground vehicles are unable due to destroyed roads and airports. With the ability to land and take off from unpaved strips or landing zones, aircraft are uniquely suited to providing meaningful first responses in natural disasters. Helene has inflicted widespread and severe damage across the southeast, especially in Alabama, Georgia, the Carolinas, Tennessee, and Virginia. Milton is expected to result in extensive damage as well. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.